I'm ready to get this thing uh, unzipped and parted out so I can get it cooled down. Ready to cook. Excited about the nice thick layer of fat we got on her. So it's gonna be good eating. And uh, yeah, hopefully get some, some nice jowls, maybe some belly off of it. it is a uh, bacon possible? A lot of, a lot of wild pigs are not uh, fat enough in the belly to actually make like decent bacon with. So it's uh, pretty exciting that we have a possibility at least uh, of that happening. You can you stay there. I'll just should be able to rinse her straight down. Cool. You ever had anybody try to save the blood? Nope. Seems like a whole lot of work for yeah. something that I feel would probably not taste all that great. It's got some pretty interesting uses that I'm interested in doing, but uh, <clears throat> on wild pigs, it's just one of those things I would probably recommend against. Yeah. What are you doing now? Just uh, just uh, cleaning out that oh, that'll, that'll the exit so it doesn't get in the way later. All right. Here we go. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna what we're called stripper. So use a hook, like a sheetrock knife. Oh, nice. So we just start like that, and we just work like every two, two and a half inches. Huh. And so these are the parts you have to watch out for. I buried this blade into my palm right here on that front leg. Holes so, holding the front leg, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> Just go all the way down, and it just stays right inside the skin line. So then, and you're doing multiple cuts so that you can more easily take strips of the skin off. Basically? Yeah, or? so that it peels in smaller strips to where it it goes easy. Hmm. And so you just do. Yeah, this is totally new to me. Yeah. Seems got some cool blog highlights going on. Mm-hmm. <laughs> an old dye job. She let the roots grow out a yeah. little too long here. <laughs> Did you ever burn the hair off to try to save the skin? Never have. Never have. You were talking about that when you were oh. indoors. <laughs> when, you were not in, to... when you were indoors. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it polite for the camera, you know. Oh, polite with the dead hanging peg right in front of us, correct. <laughs> and so then we just ring right under the the neck all the way around. We just hose her back off because we cut cross grain on so much hair yep. that if you don't hose it down or comb it, you'll get hair all over the meat. Okay. I don't think so. I think I'm just going to make head cheese. And yeah. All right. <clears throat> we got that. Now all we got to do is start like our points for gripping. Yeah. So you just take right here just with a, a knife. You just start in and you just do like three eighths to a half inch around. Just start to separate the skin from the fat. Okay. And you just work your way all the way around the pig. Just like a, the little bit at the top there? Just a little bit at the top. Yeah, you don't go very far down.
Yeah, you are right though. Like the the fat is like soft. Mm-hmm. good cool. all right so then what we take is these guys right here so we'll start like this guy and you just grab so here where's your you got your knife just yeah. separate see that right there just like that right there perfect get out of town <laughs> and so you just grab a hold strip by strip and work your way down. That's a little easier than uh, how I've done this prior. <laughs> Just like a little, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> Ooh. But Should they I do. That one left? Yeah, just just a little bit of a nick right there. There you go. It's got coattails now. Ooh. Okay. Here, let me see that. So you can, just because it's a little warmer. Yep. help that start. Nice. Right. Same thing? Yeah, just... There you go, should be enough. Oh, wait, guys, I think we fucked up. No, no. What? We didn't, we didn't get the beers out of the freezer. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There. Nice. That just goes right there at your entrance. Right the entrance one, yeah. <clears throat> These legs. When you're doing the front legs, you always want to start on the inner side. Okay. Pull down, so, oh, so I didn't get through right there. Okay. So you just, yeah, there you go. Yeah, and it looks like one more I'll right there. See now. that? There you go. Right. So you go down to right there, about where the front leg starts, mm -hmm. and you come to the Do outside. Just take, you want to hand me that knife behind you? Yeah, please. Thank you. So then you just find where that elbow stops and just get through. Mm -hmm. And you come right down to the foot. And if you bend them, this last knuckle right here, mm -hmm. If you just cut the top tendon and then the bottom, it'll break. Nice. So from there, okay. <clears throat> you want to do that other leg? Sure. All right. Uh, the pliers are right there. Yeah, so just start on that one, there. and you got to get a pretty good grip. go perfect so get and then like oh it's all right it's just it's a, lot of, <laughs> so a lot of times when you get down to where you get your hand above it uh -huh. you can hold on to the pliers with one and then put and it use the other to yeah, just brace like that. okay Keep it steady, all right good right yeah. there and so here similar we yeah. there it went so now what you do is just take the knife and see, you see that little bit of thin yeah. spot right here under that meat? Yeah. So just punch it through to where you can get a finger through it. A little lower, right in there, yeah. 
You should be able to get a finger. Oh, okay. Here's my finger. So right here. <laughs> yeah. Right in there. Do, do not stab the thing. Right here. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Cool. Cool. Good. And so then you're just going to open that up with your fingers a bit. Mm -hmm. And then you just pull in that pull skin in right down around the knuckle. To kind of peel it out that foot, foot. so not necessarily, there you go. Just a little bit farther, good. And so then, then I take that, that bigger one. Okay. Uh, yeah. And so you can see here's the top knuckle and this bottom one right, right there. In, right in there. And just slide it right across that edge. And then just go kind of right down both sides because it's got those connective sinews. Sure. I think I'm going to slip and cut you, but let's not risk it. All right, and then just go to the underside mm -hmm. and just up right through there, just cutting that. Nice. Perfect. And then just twist. Yep, grab it and just twist against the grain. So take, mm -hmm. so if you bend this right here, mm -hmm. so you're not twisting like that. So you just grab this mm -hmm. and just grab that foot, leave it at a 90 and just crank it over the top. Okay. And it'll break across that grain. There you go. Like that? Yeah. Ah, oh, yeah. There. There's a jiu-jitsu that's called the Kimura. There. <laughs> so now you can re take that knife in there and just cut that center tendon out. Cool. Oh, careful. Yeah. There you go. There. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So that happens here in the belly just because it's tougher skin. The skin's tougher on the belly compared to the back? Yeah, just because it's always rubbing on the ground. Okay, that makes sense. And so there's that for the most part. Nice. There. And so then all we do... There. Because we got the tail. This part's a little tricky just because your hands are greasy from doing it all. Sure. And so this one, you just kind of kind of start it once you get through that tail, mm -hmm. just to get back to skin. Just like so. Nice. And then it's just a matter of taking these all the way down to that bottom to the ankle. Bottom hand, yeah. And so when you get to the bottom leg, you just do a repeat of what you did the, the top, the front leg? Yeah, the joints are just in a little different spot. Oh, okay. Would it uh, make sense to pull it up a little higher or? Uh, no, because we're kind of, we're going to flip her over in a minute anyway. Okay. So you got like this joint where the that tendon is. Yeah. So if you come down kind of where you think it's going to be, like right here, mm -hmm. and go below it, mm -hmm. about I don't know half to three quarters of an inch. That's where that joint actually is. Try the other one? Yep, go for it. So like if you reach just with your thumb, you can mm -hmm. feel down, feel like that where that joint's right there. Yeah. So then come to about right here huh. and cut right yeah, there. Yeah, that's a little counterintuitive. Yeah, a little bit, yeah. Huh. There you go. And just cut the top like you did, mm -hmm. and then just go from underneath it and try and pull it right back to this back tendon. 
So just go under. No, don't nope. twist. Go straight against the grain. So ah, just okay, grab okay, here okay. and go yeah. backwards. So. And then same thing. Once you break it, you can twist it, mm -hmm. and it'll free up everything with that back tendon. Just like that. Perfect. So that's the joints. Nice. And that right there is a skinned peak. Yeah. But there's also more than one way it's going to take. For the head, uh, do, you just, so, do you just use a knife to, to Yeah, to take it off. off. So yeah. what we'll do is we're going to we'll clean her up a little bit. So you mm -hmm. just take like any knife. And where this hair is, you just go... 90 degrees of the, or the fat hmm. and just scrape okay and it comes all that hair comes right off and you'll never get all of it off but you sure. can get a good portion so by coming just right down that's a good trick though i didn't know the picking up all sorts of stuff so there's that so there the only other thing we do when she's like this is i take all this off okay just because that's where the most bacteria is going to hold. So you can just see like that little bit of skin tone. Uh, you yeah. go right down that. And that's not good eating? <clears throat> no, because that's all like her mammary glands. Gotcha. Makes sense. And so that would not taste very good. <laughs> Come across some of that in the, the elk. Yeah. <clears throat> it was uh, an unsettling moment for sure. <laughs> And so the reason, like, yeah, one, it won't eat real good, but two, that's the first thing I take off because that is also the first part that is going to spoil. spoil yeah. Do you eat thick tongue? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I presume so. I just never, never seen it. Yeah, apparently they're uh, reasonably interchangeable with like lamb tongues. Oh, interesting. I mean, obviously you're not going to have the lamb flavor, yeah. but size-wise they're comparable. Uh -huh. Yeah, this is, I, I, my experiences with skinning pigs has been doing it this way, <laughs> which is a total pain in the ass compared to <laughs> strips and strips of uh, yeah. stuff just coming off immediately. And like a boar, you have to skin the other way. Oh, like, really? By their back feet. You can't strip them because of their huh. cartilage plate. Oh, oh right. Because they have that shield. So you have to skin them by their back legs. Huh. Um, and the trick to that is just knowing when the cartilage starts is getting between the meat and the cartilage mm. so that it peels a little easier. Because if you try and separate the skin from the cartilage, you're fighting it the whole time. There goes the ears. Can you try those out for the dogs? Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a lot of work. Yeah. Head cheese is going to be enough work. I mean, I feel like most of the pigs I usually get are still eyes on, yeah. and that's what I'm doing with, that's when you usually make head cheese, that's, yeah. the eyes are still on there. Oh, that's a little weird. <laughs> what happened? Oh, it's just, it's like, right next to the eyeball. Uh, You got a Halloween costume. <laughs> I was just thinking, what's that movie? She puts the lotion on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All of a sudden, Carlo is very uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> We're not sociopaths. It's fine. He might be. I'm just trying to eat some pig head, you know? <laughs> Only one way to get it. Just a normal, <laughs> normal ass thing that people do. 
my wife and I didn't have cable for years, and so we watched movies, and so it's one of those things where now, like, I've watched so many movies repeatedly that they're just, the quotes are forever in my head. <laughs> Getting that fat along the... Yeah, staying between the skin and the fat. Yeah. It doesn't want to leave the skin at no. all. So it's like they use those muscles a lot for something. <laughs> Weird. <laughs> yeah, after I smoked that elk neck and it was just like, like buffalo meat tough, <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, this thing's just bending its head down all day, every day for 14 years. <laughs> Of course it's going to be tough, you idiot. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wonder if we had done like a moist cooking method, if that if would you, have been... Yeah. If you braise a neck, it yeah. breaks all that sinew down and it is really good. I sort of thought the smoker, because you guys had it on the smoker for a long time, right? I, like low... I smoked it all for nine hours, yeah. Yeah, I thought I just, that would do the same, but I guess... I smoked a whole venison back leg bone in, and it was 24 hours on the smoker before I could pull it. Wow. Yeah, because it just had... Uh, so much connective tissue in yeah. there that needed to be dealt with. Where's that, that hook? That yeah, hook right there. Cool. So, should there blade? Yeah. I mean, thankfully, I'm throwing the blade away at the end of this, but still. Alright, here she goes. Yes. D-snouted. You hit it on the nose. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> Too much. <laughs> Too much. All right. So we can hose, we'll hose her down and. Okay. Cool. Yeah. Scrape it off. We'll get that dirt and stuff just to. Nice. Yeah. That's a beautiful looking animal, and that is not like a farmed pig jowl, but like we'll be able to cure that. That'll be good. Get a little bit out of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's, <laughs> that's gonna be, it's gonna be good even. All right. That's um, also the reason when somebody tells you they neck shoot pigs, you know they're a liar. Because <laughs> the shoulder ends right here. Yeah. And the head starts right there. <laughs> and a two so inch like, window of opportunity. It's like, yeah, you shot one in the head. Like, <laughs> you didn't neck shoot it. You see this little bubble? A little weird air bubble in the All fat right. layer. Pop it, I'm sure it's great. Do some hosing down. Yeah, now we can let her drip dry cool. if you wanted to grab ice to put her on. Yeah, that's great. And I got know. garbage bags that we can layer, like put ice down and layer. Or she, oh, that's great. So it keeps the water off yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, so you want to do this how you want it? Or you uh, want sure, it? yeah. Yeah, so I'd start just right. Like right here? Yeah, just right in that line. Yep. Let's see what we look like. Yeah, and so from there, just there you go. Yeah. So, follow that back. Yeah, I wish that shot had been a little further <laughs> further back, but that's the way it goes. Oh, the cookie crumbles. Is that a rib? Oh, nice. It's like the frontmost rib. So I'd, I'd come in right here now. Hmm? I just come in right here. Okay, and take and it off the top end. Peel it straight yeah. back. Yeah. Come to the top. Can you provide any knowledge about uh, while the camera's rolling about uh, entry and exit and what it does for the meat? Uh, I mean, the exit's definitely uh, where it does the most damage. Um, you can see like this side's all shut up, but if you if you look over on the uh, on the other side, it's just a little just a little hole. Just a little tiny. When the when the bullet goes hole. in, it hasn't expanded yet, but once it hits soft tissue, it uh, it peels back and like doubles or triples its diameter and uh, it's and when it does that it's also dumping a lot of energy inside the body cavity and destroying organs and stuff like that so and up top so, here again yeah so i just follow that around yeah if you follow it around just kind of like we started yeah you can let that stay below your 
your jowl line. Nice. And then you just let that kind of peel on the inside of that yep. blade. Nice. Just like that. Yeah, it's pretty. <clears throat> so we'll do a lot more trimming up of that when we get home because that's most of this is not not really good eats, but the rest of this is. So. So is there a reason you don't use one of your own knives when like for for, for scanning and stuff like that? What do you mean? Like a uh, like like one of the knives that you make? Uh, I've used them before. I just I don't mind. I don't want to beat up the knives that I've made. Yeah. So I've got <clears throat> having an orange handles always nice because you can see it. Mm-hmm. And so like uh, anytime you use like a natural like an antler mm -hmm. or uh, like the abalone shell. Um, they're not as weather impervious. Mm. And so what you get, especially with bone, is that if you get them wet a bunch, it starts to, the bone actually swells and you get pores in it and then it starts to rot the bone. Got it. And so I've sealed them up and they do pretty good for limited use, but if your hands are wet when you're doing this, you kind of tend to ruin them. I imagine that it's slippery too yeah. when you're using it. So. <clears throat> So I've actually got the plan, I've done, messed around doing some resin handles uh -huh. um, and just haven't perfected that yet. Uh, I plan on doing like a burlap micarta for a couple knives that I got for people. Nice. Or like, like G10 or something like mm -hmm. that. This looks like a super awkward seal right now. Like it's so <laughs> slick. Like. Is this a dolphin? Yeah, right? <laughs> Eric, what have you done? We did not shoot a dolphin. <laughs> <laughs> Eric, say it into the camera. I just want to make sure that clear. We did not shoot a dolphin. Okay, it just looks. There's no we here. You were alone with a gun. I did not shoot a dolphin. <laughs> Do you want me to hold this for you while you're No, I'm just trying to. We've got a lot of back in there, so I'm nice. trying to figure out where we want to go. I would want for that tender one is probably going to be right there. Yes. Yep. That'll be a good neck roast too, this little four inch piece. It's pretty. It's it's always interesting to me how quickly something like this goes from being carcass to food. Oh, yeah. You know, like, like just in, in your perception of it. Yep. Yeah, even with the head on still, it's oh, like, yeah. it's almost not yeah. an animal anymore, right? Yeah. Like it's, it's, you're visualizing it all as cuts. Yeah. yeah. And then as up on a plate. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Here we are. Okay, so that's where we're going to start there. So now we'll cool. do the hams. Sweet. So we can expose that bottom and yeah. we can do the cuts. Okay. This is one thing yep. we're going to want to clean though. Yeah. Millie? There's a little one looking for you. Hey, Bug, what's up? I'm on the side. What do you want, baby? I got a pig. You got a pig, She's too? She's got a stuffed pig. Oh, oh man. You got a piggy. That's it's a pink pig. That's a pretty pig. Oink, oink. Oink, oink. <laughs> I love it. Okay. <laughs> house. Love you. <laughs> No, I'll see them. I think that size would be delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Tenderloin time, baby. What did she say? I don't know. Or something? 
That's good. Eaten. Got it under the line. So what are you cutting off right now? This is the tenderloin right here. Mm -hmm. So this would be on a cow, like the eye of the ribeye. Is what we're removing. That's gonna be uh, it's one where there's not that much of it, so it tends to be like the hunter special. Like yeah. there's not even enough to really like share with people most of the time. Yeah, and unless that's it's what, elk or bigger. That's one of the cuts that when you're in the field you do not hang. No, because you lose about half of it by letting it <laughs> age. Good. Do you typically age your deer? Yeah. You do. Uh huh. Where do you hang them? I've got a coal box. Oh, okay. Nice. That was great stuff, by the way. Cool. Camera loved that. Nice. How long do you typically hang it for? Uh, we usually do like 10 days. 10 days? Nice. Have you done longer? I have not, just because the cold box that we use is shared by a bunch of people. Oh, uh, I see. And so it's not constant, because especially in deer season, you get a lot of people yeah. coming in. Putting stuff in. It's probably open and close all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, baby girl. What's the, that's the only thing I don't know. <laughs> Tell that to your mom. <laughs> hey, fuck off. Not showing with the fly, huh? No. This will be some good stock meat, too. So a lot of these bones that he's trimming stuff away from, we'll, we'll still keep and put, uh, put in the stock pot, make some good broth. Some bone broth, if you will? I will not. <laughs> I do not grant the premise. <laughs> Eric, would you say you have an aversion to bone broth? You could say that, yeah. You could say that? One of my favorite Twitter bots is uh, the one that just anytime anybody tweets the words bone broth, it just replies and says, that's called stock. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Is that still around? I haven't seen that in a while. Yeah, I haven't seen it in a while either. <laughs> Might have gotten turned off. Too many angry bone broth devotees. Okay, so I'm gonna yeah, this. that ball joint. That's a clean ball joint right there. Yeah. That's a hard shape for nature to make. Look at that. Nice. Maybe just a little. A little scrapey. Show me is. that. Show me that, will you? Talk about that. This is a whole, whole ham minus the little, little hoof, but uh. Yeah, we'll probably, uh, I think we're going to leave these bone in and do them probably in the smoker or uh, maybe just a nice roast Put that on the grill. I don't know. Let's see. Lots of, lots of fun ways you can go with that. Good stuff. So you're like following around the, the yeah. backbone there. So if you come in, like, so I split right down the tail line. Yep. And so, because you can see right along the tail, you got a little bone here. Yeah. And then you come in at the bottom of these back straps. Yeah. Then <clears throat> you can find that hip joint. And so that's what I come around on the inside on. It's right here you're on it. And so you just kind of match that line. Yeah. Because this is, you can actually cut through this, which gets you out of whack when you're trying right. to get yeah, that ball joint. That. So it doesn't do anything. It just, you just want to follow. Turn a little bit towards oh, there. Sorry. There we go. And so you just follow. Mm -hmm that line and as you go you just keep peeling that because that's that there's a sinew line right here okay yeah and so as you're coming down see that bone you just keep exposing that bone yeah. right there this is also why it's nice nice to have a dedicated boning knife because all this work along the bone is uh can dull a knife up pretty good <laughs> yeah it does a pretty good number on a blade what do you use to sharpen uh, I use uh, ceramics if they're not too bad. Mm -hmm. 
And then I have a stone kit if they're if they get real out of whack. Oh, cool. and Is then, there like a like a progression of grits that you go through or yeah. yeah. So like the ceramics there's two different there's a a honing and a sharpening mm -hmm. on the ceramic sticks. Mm -hmm. And they do pretty good as long as things are within reason. Yeah, like if you're maintaining an edge as opposed to like sharpening, sharpening. Yeah. And then if you get into where you're actually having to sharpen one, mm -hmm. um, you need to uh, make sure we get that in a little better. Oh, there's like my stone set has like five different stones on it. Mm -hmm. And so I start, usually don't need the, the most aggressive. Yeah. That's for like yeah. reprofiling that or something. Yeah. Like that. But you start like in a medium grit. Every time. <laughs> oh, watch that blade because I got it right in there. Oh, there you go. So we can hose that if you want to hose that down just to wash that blood off. Uh, yeah, or why not? Got it right there, right? Just give it a little, just a spurt. It should do just fine. do is I'm going to cut like make a line right here where this tenderloin or that rib's going to be mm -hmm. and so we'll come up and we'll just take the bone saw right down that so you'll have a flat rack oh and then a flat rack and you'll have both loins attached with to the, the ribs uh, okay. on the shorts cool if yeah, that works that for sounds you. great yeah it's this final line you mean older or do you got it? no that's pretty good right there So basically coming in at the right below the loin with the saw? Yeah. yeah. So you can see this is that bottom edge of that loin right there. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. And uh, so it's the you, maker. Down here at the bottom, it thins out and you lose a little bit of the rib, but you'd rather lose the rib than the, the loin. Yeah. This is normally what would be really good for sausage making, but Tony was saying that the uh, wild pig fat is way softer and so it doesn't uh, perform as well as normal pig back fat, you know, farm pig back fat would in a, in a sausage. It sort of renders out quicker, spreads, leaks, not, not as great. Actually, look at the ear hole in this thing. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Yeah. You can see the little hairs come out. Yeah. Hang on, switch that way just one more second. Just trying to lay some of that open. There we go. These little crazy little glands. Yeah. Like little black beans. <laughs> what are those? Like, just lymph nodes and oh, glands. Yeah. Lots of weird little gland stuff up here in the neck. All right, so we'll do cool. what we'll do while it's hanging is we'll hose some of this bloodshot out mm -hmm. just so it's clean when we get through. between a rib. <laughs> okay, so I got three to go. Would it be helpful when they come around your right? Or? Try not to drop this guy on the ground. Oh, yeah. So if you want to, I'm gonna hand you that real quick. That guy is at the point where Okay. 
this. And then we take our boner. <laughs> Dope. Show me. Yeah. So that Look is our Racco ribs. So we'll probably do some bacon with this this layer up here. You can see is real nice. Clean off some of that hair, and then we will smoke those ribs. Those will be delicious. Nice. Pop that cooler open for you. So you can really see that uh, exit. It's gonna be snug. Up the, uh... So that was actually the entrance right there. That's the entrance. Yeah, this was the entrance side, and so you can see where it went in the small hole that was on the exterior or outside of the pig. When as soon as it hit soft tissue and some bone, it just really works. expanded and opened up. Uh, did exactly what it was supposed to do. So, all right, next cool. ribs. Thank you guys. All right, so this one we can go a little different on. Now that I can see. <laughs> Still good? Okay. I think we're down to yeah. one. Nice. That's a beaut. And panel number two. So then Eric will probably leave this whole thing. Yeah. Pelvic and everything attached. Huh? That, that sounds great. Okay. Like hold it up at an angle or something. That's right. We may have to go home just for cooler space reasons. <laughs> right. Oh, can you get those organs out of there? Those are getting squished. They are currently squished. <laughs> yeah, alrighty. Head. Head's easy to detach now. <laughs> got it. Here, we'll take the hook right out the top. Then you gotta handle the lay it in wherever you want and slide it out. So all we'll do now, Eric, mm -hmm. is your tag. We will just re-zip tie that onto the onto one of the legs. Okay. Can you? Uh... I have a zip tie here. Cool. Grab. Or we can even because the head's in there, we can even just reattach the head there. Cool. Uh, yeah. Can you spray me off? Slightly cleaner. Might have to drive back today just for cooler space. <laughs> yeah, it's good. Remember to clean your nails after this so you don't have blood? Yeah. Like, because that, that's where bacteria can get. I'm going to do a, a more thorough cleaning. Yeah. Uh, Oh, there it is. I was like, I thought we took those off after the shoulders. <laughs> Tell me why you're putting the tag back on. So, oh, go ahead, Eric. Oh, just uh, if, if for some reason we were to get stopped uh, by a Department of Fish and Wildlife employee, you're uh, required to have the tag attached to the carcass uh, all the way from the field to your house. And Really, even once you get in your house, but that's yeah, practically yeah. not an issue. But you know, Fifth Amendment. So. Right, yeah, they're not going <laughs> to. Oh, no, Fourth Amendment. Fourth Amendment. Oh, that's heavy now. Yeah, it's got some stuff in it, it turns <laughs> out. <laughs> Coolers get heavy quick. Yeah. I didn't think I needed both of these, but maybe should have brought the second one. <laughs> I mean, take one. Yeah. Pig.
follow us at, at SourceWild <laughs> on all your social media platforms. Wherever good tweets are found. Uh, bad tweets too, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs>